All right. In this video, I want to talk about how justification, sanctification, righteousness, salvation is all tied to faith and belief in Jesus and what he did. And it's not tied to the law or keeping the law or good works. Not that we shouldn't obey God and shouldn't do good works, but our salvation is not tied to that. And that's what people seem to have a problem with, is that, yes, we should obey God, yes, we should do good works, but even if we fail in doing God's will, we fail in doing good works, that has nothing to do with our salvation. We just get right back up and do better. Make up for what we've done. Next time, we won't do the same thing. Learn and grow, mature. You don't condemn yourself and you don't condemn others for doing the same thing. Why? Because we're saved by grace through faith that not of ourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, as any man should boast. Salvation is a gift that we get by faith. It's God's righteousness. It's not something we can obtain ourselves. It's because only God is good. We only get it by God giving it to us. And we only accept it by faith. There's nothing we can do about it or for it or what have you. It's just something we accept by faith. And God freely gives it to us. <clears throat> so that's what I want to get into. I was doing a little study and that's what I want to encourage you to do. You can go to BibleHub.com, right, if you just ignore this part right here, and you can use this. You can use uh, their app on your iPhone or your Android phone, and you can just type in stuff like sanctification, justification, justified, sanctified, righteousness, righteous salvation and you use those keywords and you can study and I would recommend also using it with something outside of the internet because it doesn't always bring up stuff that you may find yourself you might have found a verse reading the Bible that talks about righteousness or sanctification justification but when you search it on here for some reason it doesn't come up so I wouldn't use this as an end all when you're doing that but it's definitely a good good tool to use to study something like a topic like salvation. And in this topic, it's about righteousness and justification. That's what I'm getting into. <clears throat> and it's never tied to obedience to the law, works of the law, good works. It's always tied to God, a gift from God, belief and faith. So let's get into that. And I'm, I'm trying to make it quick. I know I got a bunch of tabs here, but it's basically just a bunch of one verses, one sentences or so, you know, so it shouldn't be all too long unless I just get inspired and keep talking, which could happen, or I can ramble like this, you have a fun time with that, but anyway, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 11, it says, and such were some of you, but ye were washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God. <coughs> Now, you see here, it talks about a bunch of unrighteous people and how they don't inherit the kingdom of God, right? Fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, effeminate, abusers of themselves, thieves, covetous, drunkards, revilers, extortioners. But it says you're not like this. And guess what it says? It says ye are washed, ye are sanctified, ye are justified. Those are all present tense. It's not something that, oh, you're going to be, you will be, maybe you will be. There's a condition attached. It says you are. And there actually is a condition that you believe on God. You believe on the one whom he sent. You have faith in what he did for you. That's all it is. You just believe and you have faith. It's just, just like believing your father lives and you have faith that he actually loves you. It's that simple. Right. So anyway, let's let's continue on with this. In Second Corinthians chapter six, let me ignore that for now. Verse fourteen it says, 
Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? So, did you see what you are told right here about righteousness? He tells you not to be unequally out with those who don't believe, unbelievers. Why? Because how can the righteous have fellowship with the unrighteous? So he's saying you're righteous by your belief. And they're not righteous because of their unbelief. You see how it doesn't say anything about, oh yeah, unbelievers can be good people. To you and me, there's a lot of good people in the world. And we think, yeah, they should go to heaven. They should be saved. They're good people. They're lovely people. But guess what? They still got sin. And if they don't accept Jesus, they don't go to heaven. Because you don't go to heaven for being good. You don't go to hell for being bad. You go to heaven for accepting Jesus, and you go to hell for rejecting Jesus. It's it's that simple. It, ha it has nothing to do with us. <clears throat> but anyway, let, let's continue on here. In Romans, all right, this one is more than one verse. Chapter 4, verse 1, it says here, what shall we say then that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath where of to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scriptures? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. That's Genesis chapter 15, in case you're wondering. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness, even as David also described the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are those whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. And I actually looked this up, and it might be in one of these other ones, one of these psalms I brought up. I think I brought it up. For some reason, it's not in here uh, but anyway uh, that's why I, I brought up oh yeah it does tell you about Abraham's faith and how it's counted to him righteousness right here but it doesn't get into the Psalms where David says this hopefully I did put it up here because I no I don't see a Psalms up here all right I guess I have it up on another thing maybe I'll put it on the info box if I remember but anyway the important thing here is that we see that Abraham was accounted righteous because he believed God. And then Paul goes on to say that, Now him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace but of debt. So it's saying if you work for your salvation, which is by your keeping the law, obeying God, doing good works, doesn't God owe you? But he's saying, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly. So we see here how justification is it again connected to belief? His faith is counted for righteousness. You see, believing and faith pretty well connected. So here we see belief and faith connected to justification and righteousness, but working, it does not connect it to that at all. <clears throat> so let's go on here. Galatians chapter 3, verse 11. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident, for the just shall live by faith. So in this verse, you can read this whole paragraph. It's a very good one. But I'm going to try to keep the video short. It says, no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. So if you want to use the law to justify yourself by your obedience to it, to either earn salvation, prove you're saved, or to keep your salvation, in the sight of God, you're not going to be justified by the law. The just live by faith. Because you're justified by God, not by you. You can't justify yourself, no matter what you do. You can't save yourself, no matter what you do. It is God that justifies and saves you. And it's all by your faith, that you just trust your Father, that He loves you, and He's going to take care of you. You don't think He loves you and wants to pull you out of the quicksand? 
The more you work and try to get out, the more you sink into that quicksand. You just put your hands up. Just an act of faith. Okay, I, you know what? My head's under, and I can't even see. I'm just putting my hands up, and I know that's all I got to do because my God's going to, my Father's going to pull me out. And that's how it works. He even tells you here, and the law is not of faith. All right? But I'm going to try to keep it short and go on here. <coughs> Galatians chapter 2, verse 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Ain't that something there? No man is justified by works of the law. So it's again telling us we can't be justified by the law, but we're justified by faith. Ain't that something? Justified by the faith of Christ and not of works of the law. By the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified. He just keeps saying the same thing over and over. No justification in the law. Justification in faith in Jesus. No justification in the law. Justification is in Jesus in faith in him. He's saying the same thing over and over and over and over. And still so, so many people don't get it. Galatians chapter 5. Verse 2, Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. What does this imply? That if you're not circumcised, you're not indebted to do the whole law. There's a lot of seven-day Adventists. They'll grab this and be like, yeah, it's talking about circumcision, which is part of the ceremonial law. And they're debted to do the whole law. The whole law includes the Ten Commandments. And in saying that if you're not circumcised, you're not indebted to do the whole law. And it says, Christ has become no effect unto you. Whosoever of you was justified by the law, you're fallen from grace. So what is it saying here again? They're trying to be justified by the law, by keeping the Ten Commandments. And by doing so, you've fallen from grace. But we, through the Spirit, wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. Here again, righteousness connected by faith and not about the law. You see how it's saying you're trying to be justified by the law? You're fallen from grace. And that your righteousness is by faith. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor un uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. And a lot of Seventh-day Adventists will bring up where <coughs> Paul says, Circumcision availeth nothing, and uncircumcision nothing, but keeping the commandments. And they completely remove the context where he's saying that, yeah, you Jews, you think you're special because you're circumcised, but you sin just like Gentiles. It's not about whether you're circumcised. It's about whether you have sinned or not, and you all have sinned. That's why you all need Jesus. It's not saying, oh, keep the commandments and you'll be saved. Keep the, keep the commandments or you'll be lost. It doesn't say that. They completely twist it. And here's another instance where he's saying, circumcision means nothing or uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Why? Because your righteousness is of faith. Your righteousness is not of the law. They take one little verse and they they try to fit it into their belief. It's basically what they do is they take like the, you know, those little pegs that you have to put in the right hole. You have a circle that you have to put in the circle hole. The square, they go in the square, the star and the star, the crescent moon and the crescent moon. Well, they'll just take that star and they try to fit it in the square and they take the square, try to fit it in the moon and then the the crescent moon, they try to put it in the star, and then the star in the circle, and then they take the hammer and they go boom, 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 and jam it in there and go, see, fits perfect. But anyway, <clears throat> here's Titus chapter 3. At verse 5 it says, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. So we see here that we are saved because it says, but after that kindness and love of God, our Savior toward man appeared. And we're not saved because of our works of righteousness. Whether we're doing them to get saved, to prove we're saved, or to keep salvation, it says no. God's our Savior. He saved us. And it's of the renewing of the Holy Ghost. It, we're trying to take credit for something that we get no credit for. 
It says that we're justified by his grace. That we may be heirs according to the hope of eternal life. See, it just talks about faith, right? And every time it talks about good works, it encourages good works, but it doesn't connect them to salvation, or to justification, to sanctification. That's key, because Seventh-day Adventists will bring up a lot of good verses about being obedient to God, about keeping the commandments, about doing good works. And the Calvinists do this, the Catholics do it, and other people who believe that we need to do these things to earn salvation, prove we're saved, or to keep our salvation. And I'll show them, hey, where does it say in here salvation is tied to this? That we'll be damned if we don't do this. That it justifies us, it makes us righteous, it sanctifies us. It doesn't say anything like that. So why do you keep tying it to salvation? Why do you keep tying it to righteousness? Why do you keep tying it to sanctification, justification, and all these things when it's not connected? Yeah, we should do those things. But our salvation is a gift from God. God saves us. And you're trying to take that glory away from him. Act like what Jesus did is meaningless. Why did Jesus die on the cross? Why did he raise again? If you have to do all this work to save yourself, what was the point of what he did? There was like no point. He did all that and you're like, okay, whatever. I got to do all this work so that I'm saved. Well, what the hell is wrong with you? You blind or something? Anyway. <clears throat> Romans chapter 1, verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth doesn't say any one to everyone that doeth, to everyone that obeyeth, to everyone that doesn't sin, to everyone that is perfect. It says to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For there is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith that is written, the just shall live by faith. So there it connects just, which is tied to justification, and righteousness to faith. Salvation tied into belief in the faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. What does that mean there? Well, it means like what, what a lot of these people are doing. They think <coughs> because they're teaching to do good, that makes them good. What you've got to realize is with Cain and Abel, it's a perfect story to tell you because Abel was doing good. You see, when Adam and Eve sinned, what happened? God cursed Adam to have to till the ground by the sweat of his brow to get forth food so that he can live. All right, it's basically he has to take care of himself. He has to save himself. He has to be self-efficient, right? But even in that, even in the work that he does, he tills the ground, he plants the seeds, and he waters, and he keeps the weeds away and all this stuff. It's more of a lesson to teach him of what's going on in his spiritual life, in his mind, in his relationship with God. Because even with all that work, God still gives the increase. God produces the fruit from his work. He can do all that work, and nothing will come of it unless God gives it. But that was out of punishment. God told him to do this, not to save himself, not to earn the respect of God. It was a punishment. Like if you're a child and, you're and your father spanks you or he puts you in the corner, is that somehow earning your salvation? Is that earning your father's respect? No, it's something you got to do because you messed up and you're being punished. <laughs> now, what Adam and Eve did is they tried to put on their own righteousness, the fig leaves. But God said, no, no, no. No, no. And you're trying to cover up all this. I'm going to do it. And he gave them skins of lambs, which is pointing to Jesus. Because later on, their two sons learned from that event. And Cain, uh, Abel, let's go with Abel first. 
he comes with faith. He has faith in the slain lamb. He learned. He was like, you know what? My parents, they tried to do their own fig leaves. They tried to set up their own righteousness. And God was like, no, no, no. I'm, I'm your righteousness. I'm going to save you. And he cursed them. It was a punishment to be tilling the ground and to getting their food from the ground. I'm going to go with faith in the slain lamb of God. And that's what he went by. But Cain, he's like, yeah, I'm doing what God said. And I'm actually doing work. I'm doing the work. God said to till the ground by the sweat of our brow and bring forth fruit. And I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to bring forth the fruit from that. And he didn't even get the message. He didn't even get what's going on there. You know, because after he sent Cain sins, God even tells him, you know, you got to master yourself or else sin lies at the door and sin will become your master. And Cain didn't learn that from doing all that tilling, that he has to plow the field, you know, make way for, in his mind to receive the seed, to receive the word of God. And he has to keep the weeds away so that nothing interferes, you know, other thoughts, you know, something else growing up instead, right? He has to do all these things and he has to water and then he has to patiently wait and have faith that God's going to produce the fruit. He, he goes through all that. And he still doesn't get the message and he takes credit for it. And he's like, my work should be accepted. I'm doing what you said. Why you accept an Abel and not me? This is bull crap. And he's getting all mad about it. And that's what these people are right here. They're saying, I'm keeping the Ten Commandments. I'm teaching the pe people to do te the Ten Commandments. I'm obeying God. I'm teaching people to obey God. I'm encouraging good works and I'm doing good works. I should be accepted. I should be saved. This proves that I'm saved. This keeps my salvation. And how is this bozo over here preaching faith? Faith in Jesus. What Jesus did. How is this bozo saved? This is bogus. How is God giving any respect to this guy? To this gal? That's these guys right here. All ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. They hold the truth and it's in unrighteousness because your righteousness are filthy rags. They're not perfect and they will never be perfect. You want righteousness? You need God's righteousness. <clears throat> so let's move on here. Romans chapter 3 verse 21. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So here we see that our faith is in the grace, because the grace is what gives us the justification. The righteousness, the salvation, it's grace, it's a gift of God. What he did is grace towards us. And that we'll see the grace mixed in there with the belief and the faith for justification for salvation. And you can see how it's completely contrary to the law. The righteousness of, of God without the law, witnessed by the law. The righteousness of God which is by faith upon all those who believe. Being justified by his grace. To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be the just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Why doesn't it say that uh, at this time his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which Work the works of the law of him which is perfectly obedient, who does good works. It just says believe. It's just simple. Isn't that all your ch you want your children to do is believe in you, that you're going to take care of them? Do you really want them to be jumping through flaming hoops and doing all this stuff to earn your love and to earn dinner, <laughs> breakfast, lunch? <laughs> I mean, really, if you being evil treat your children with better love 
in care than God does. That's insane. But that's not true. So anyway. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. So then we see, again, contrary. You don't see the law connected to be, being justified, but we see it by faith without the law. All right. I think this might be the psalm. Uh, I don't know. I acknowledge my, yes. I think this is actually it is. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and my iniquity I have not hid. And I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. Salah. I think this is the one that was connected to one I was telling you about. David over here. That might actually be it. I thought there was like two or three other verses that connected to it though. But anyway, here's still a psalm talking about acknowledging your sin and you not hiding your iniquity. And you confess it all to, the, to Yahweh over here. Yahweh our salvation. And he forgives us. Just like that. Doesn't say he did anything for it. All he said was he admitted it and confessed it. <laughs> Ephesians 5 verse 9 For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. So we see how it comes from the Spirit. There was another one that talked about the Holy Spirit. And guess what? When we believe, we are sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. And I don't have that verse up. So, you know what? We're in Ephesians. We can do that. We can just jump there. You know, because the fruit, the Spirit is that. But guess what it says down here? With all this about believing and having faith, it says, In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. You're sealed with it. The Holy Spirit is with you. And that's how you're able to actually do anything good. But anyway. <laughs> Philippians chapter 1. Being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which you get from the Spirit, which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 7. But if the ministration of death, written and engraved in stones, was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses, Moses for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away. So here, written and engraved in stones, is the ministration of death. That's the Ten Commandments. How shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? For if the ministration of condemnation be glory, much more doth the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. So we see a contrast here about the ministration of death written engraved in stones, the Ten Commandments, are the ministration of condemnation, of death. But they had glory. But righteousness is from a different ministration. For even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect by the reason of the glory that excelleth. For if that which is done away was glorious, much more that which remaineth is glorious. The ministration of the Spirit is the ministration of righteousness. And that's what remains, and it is glorious. More glorious than the Ten Commandments. <clears throat> Romans 8. I don't know why I'm not ending with this. Let me see this. Okay, yeah, I know why. All right, so Romans 8, verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom did he predestinate, them also he called, and whom he called, he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, whom also maketh intercession for us. 
You see, you shouldn't condemn yourself, because I know a lot of us, we might not let the world condemn us, but we'll condemn ourselves. But you're on the same boat with everybody else. There's no one, even yourself, that can condemn you if you believe in God and in the one he ha has sent. You have faith in what Jesus did for you. No one condemn you. It is God that justifies. Who is it that condemns? Who's going to condemn who, what God justified? Who? You'll find some of these people. It's crazy, but they, they do it. And I think that's what I wanted to end with over here. Is not only talking about how you're justified. God justified you. And no one can condemn you. But also I also want to talk about these people who try to condemn you. <clears throat> Second Corinthians chapter 11. But what I do that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, that wherein they glory, they may be found even as we. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And now marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. And you see here how they are the ministers of righteousness, and their end should be according to their works. Our end is not according to our works. It's going to be according to our faith and our belief. If we have faith in Jesus, we believe in him. We're saved because he saved us. That's what he did for us. Our works are what give us reward. Right? Here, Satan transformed into an angel of light and his ministers and the ministers of righteousness. You see, they're trying to be ministers of righteousness, but righteousness comes by Christ. So what are they doing? They're trying to tell you righteousness comes by keeping the law, obeying God, doing good works. That's filthy righteousness because it's imperfect and it'll never be perfect. If you try to keep the law, be obedient, and do good works to either earn salvation, to prove you're saved, or to keep your salvation, you fail every day. No doubt. I live that. I know how it works. You're just going to fail. Your righteousness is as filthy rags. And that's what Satan guts. He guts these ministers, being ministers of righteousness. And their end is going to be according to their works. Because that's what they're saying to what to do. They're judging everybody by their works. So they're going to be judged by their works. And guess what? Even if you're, you're preaching to keep the commandments, to obey God, to do good works, and you work to do those things, guess what? You're not going to be found perfect. And if you're judged by your works of doing those things, it ain't going to be nice. It ain't going to be pretty. Because you got to pay for all them sins. Because you want to go by your own righteousness? Well, then you're going to go by your own failings too. And you're not going to be found perfect. You're going to be found wanting. So it's best to put down your own righteousness. Take on God's righteousness. And I encourage you to do so. So thanks for watching and take care.